And in this video, we take a look at some news which has just been released today on the 25th of January 2022 concerning Michael Steele. Hello, hello, please. Yeah, what's the problem, sir? Um, we've just closed down our farm track, yeah, go and uh, feed our pheasants. We've come across a Range Rover with three people in it, yeah, it appears that they're dead. I don't know what's happening, blood in the motor all over them. Welcome back to a new video on the Essex Boys case. As always, if you are enjoying the content, please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in the Essex Boys case, or simply true crime in general, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. The following newspaper article is from the 25th of January 2022, with the headline, Essex Boys Michael Steele loses bid to downgrade status. A bid by one of the men convicted of the so-called Essex Boys murders to downgrade his high security category A prisoner status has been dismissed, despite him now being aged 78. Michael Steele, originally from Great Bentley, who was nicknamed the Angel of Death, was jailed for life in 1998 for the murders of three drug dealers found shot dead in a Range Rover in Rettendon near Chelmsford in 1995. A High Court judicial review took place of a prison and probation service decision which said Steele must stay in a Category A prison. Its decision was made on the basis, convincing evidence of a significant reduction in his risk of similar reoffending had not been shown. Mr Justice Fordham dismissed the case following a hearing. In his judgment, he said the probation service's Category A team arrived at its decision after consideration of detailed representations, including from Steele and a trained psychologist, and it was satisfied that the killer must stay in a top security prison. As part of the judgment, it was revealed Steele has admitted being involved in the importation of drugs said to be the reason of the falling out which led to the murders. The report stated, quote, the claimant, while accepting his involvement in drug importation, has always protested his innocence over the triple murder. He has been in custody in conjunction with those matters since 1996, when he was aged 53. His 23-year minimum term expired in May 2019. He has been in Category A throughout. Steele was previously beaten unconscious while in prison at Whitemoor Prison near Peterborough in 2010. He sought £100,000 in damages after claiming inadequate staffing in his part of the jail had left him open to attack. The claim was thrown out in 2018. Steele was convicted alongside Jack Wombs for the shooting dead of Tony Tucker, 38 from Fobbing, Pat Tate, 37 of Basildon and Craig Rolf, 26 of Chafford, 100. Last year, Wombs, who protested his innocence, was declared suitable for release by a parole board panel and was freed from jail. The infamous killings were said to have taken place after trouble arose between the two drug dealing groups. The case inspired the 2000 film Essex Boys starring Sean Bean. Well, quite an interesting piece there. It would appear that Michael Steele is to remain a Category A prisoner according to the Evening Echo newspaper piece which has just come out today. Now, I know a certain somebody who will be jumping all over this saying, look, he's admitted the importations... He's a triple killer. <sighs> we all know. We all know that that's going to be said. Um, for me, it doesn't change anything personally. I've always, um, you know, it's always been pretty obvious to people who have followed the case for any length of time that um, Steele and Wombs were most definitely guilty of importation. And I think this is the one of the things that I want to draw some attention to, I guess, um, in this particular video and something that I've said um, during my previous videos. And that is that Steele and Wombs, during the trial for the importations and the triple killings, were pretty much between a rock and a hard place. It was either a case of go not guilty on everything, or admit to potentially involvement or potential involvement in, in both crimes. Even if they'd admitted their guilt for the importations, they both knew that they were facing lengthy, lengthy, a lengthy spell behind bars. So it was simply a case of go not guilty on everything and hope for the best, um, or if they found that there was some merit to owning up or admitting to the killings as well as the importations, then go down that route. But 
there, there just wasn't any point in admitting to the importations because they were they were facing such a lengthy spell behind pre- behind bars anyway. Um, so to me, there's no there's no link here. There's no link here in the dishonesty of okay, uh, they're they're drug importers. Okay, so that that automatically makes them guilty of triple murder. To me, I just don't use that train of thought. Um, you know, of course they were drug importers. It's pretty obvious from all the statements that we've read for, you know, the surveillance operation against them. It's pretty obvious that they were drug importers. But just because they lied about that, does that necessarily mean that they're capable of triple murder? Does it really? For some people out there, it may simply be a case that, well, you know, they lied about the importations. Clearly, they're also guilty of the, the triple murder of Tucker Tate and Roth. I guess it really just depends um, how you view it, how you look at the court case um, in general and, you know, how much stock you really put into the fact that they denied the importation side um, of their charges. I do find it quite bizarre, though, in a lot of ways, that Jack Wombs is now a free man, as far as I'm aware, and Michael Steele hasn't even been downgraded. You know, he hasn't even gone from category A to B or, or anything. And also his age, you know, he's 78 years old now. What do they exactly expect him to get up to if he were in fact released? I mean, has he been that bad inside? I mean, that's what we need to, I guess, ask ourselves. Ask ourselves. Um, Jack Wombs during his time in prison was clearly, um, I guess what you'd class a role model prisoner. Um, learned to read and write, taught other prisoners whilst there. And really made, you know, the best out of a bad situation. But what did Michael Steele do? All I hear from Michael Steele, really, um, or from the newspaper reports concerning Michael Steele, is that he sued, you know, the prison authorities for this, or he sued for that. Hasn't shown any remorse or any sort of, you know, I guess any sort of willingness to improve himself whilst in prison. So has that really held him back? Has that, I guess, counted against him in a lot of ways? In my opinion, I find it highly unlikely that Michael Steele will be released from prison anytime soon. It's interesting there also that they mention that a psychology report has been done on him. Um, and obviously, you know, I don't know these individuals, but from everything I've gained, you know, whilst, whilst looking into this case for the last couple of years, you know, reading the books or, or um, the newspaper articles or the official statements concerning the case, the overwhelming impression that I get of Michael Steele is, is he, has, he has got a lot of ego and I don't know whether that is actually held him back in terms of trying to progress through the prison system. Um, you only need to look back um, in terms of the book Blogs 19 where Darren Nichols meets Michael Steele and there's all this uproar in the canteen because of food which has been served and Steele's leading the way, you know, demanding new food. And Yeah, he's, he's a very much a stickler for the rules. Um, and, you know, all of this suing of the of the prison authorities... Um, and I guess just his natural attitude whilst being in prison all these years hasn't really done him any favours in terms of progressing through the prison system, um, you know, in the hopes of being released. Anyway, do leave your own thoughts and feelings regarding this news in the comment section below. And as always, many thanks for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.